Hi, I'm Maverick. I'm from Filipino. I'm Faith, and we're from the Adelaide. Hi, I'm Tick. Hi, I'm Tick. And we are from the Android team. Hi, I'm Tick. I'm Jungle. We're from the Adelaide team. Hi, I'm Huilian. And I'm William. And we are from the Adelaide team. is achieved through PID. However, even with very good PID, there will be errors accumulated due to the multiple rotations or changes in the environment, so the robot might not actually be exactly straight. So, to overcome the various error accumulation, we do calibration. So, calibration is performed by the front and the left sensors, measuring distance to ensure perpendicularity. So, however, the sensors are not extremely accurate. So previously, we used a best fit line according to the points that we have plotted. But as you can see from the graph, there will still be a marginal error which is not good enough for calibration. Later on, we moved to another weak method of using lookup tables whereby we use linear interpolation between each point to give us millimeter accuracy for the sensors. His name is Chin Tae. And she's Min Jie. So this is our Android app. It's a remote controller for our robot. Our app will be able to move four directions set current point and waypoint and also start exploration and shortest path our app will be using bluetooth to communicate with our bike <laughs> and we can monitor the incoming and outgoing messages from our bike and finally we can edit the commands that will be sent to our bike for the algorithm of exploration what we use is the left wall following algorithm where some of the grids are left unexplored, so we use the shortest pass algorithm to let the robot to traverse back to the previously unexplored grids. Exactly, and for the farmers part, what we use is the A-star algorithm. It is a combination of the decultural algorithm and breathless search. So we use the heuristic function to make use of the uh, turning cost and moving cost to get the robot from the current position to the end position. Hi, we are from the RPI team. For RPI, we use an object-oriented design to handle messages from each component. Initially, we use three tracks to receive messages from each component and one track to send the messages out to each component respectively. One of the main issues that we encounter is that Arduino cannot receive any command while it's doing something. So we introduce another thread and another queue to handle it. This is our new architecture where we have this new QUSB to buffer the data and this new separate thread to handle the data settings. 